All right, so what we have here is a uh, 2019 T250 148 inch wheelbase transit. And we need to change the rear brakes. The rear brakes, they always go out on these things and a lot of times they're worn so bad that the caliper pistons won't go back in and then you have to change the pistons, but we're gonna see if we can get by. The tools that you're gonna need for this job, these bolts here, this axle flange has to come out in order to get the rotors and stuff off of here because they're bolted through the flange. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a kit to turn in the twist-in piston. You can either get a, a mechanical set like this or you can get a pneumatic set like this. I got this off Amazon for 80 bucks when other guys were paying tons of money for them. It's the EWK, excellent working experience. Basically pneumatic operated. Uh, piston turn-in kit and then this is from Mac tools, but you can find this at Harbor Freight as well. It's a caliper disc brake set I use a 15 millimeter on my impact for the bolts that go through the hub flange. I always have a big hammer There's a 48 ounce hammer can of brake clean to clean everything off a Couple pieces of pig mat with a drain pan because you're gonna lose just a tad bit of back uh, oil here um, I use a 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench for my caliper bracket and then I use a 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench for my caliper hold pins the slide pin bolts now the parts that you're gonna need for this are over here oh one more thing I also use a drill with a brush to clean off any areas where guide pins and stuff may need to go these are the bolts through the axles. They don't want you to reuse them. Uh, the part number is W716084S439, and you need 10 of them. There's four in a kit. Uh, the O-rings that they want you to use on the actual flange area, which you'll see is a BK3Z4A332 Charlie. You need two of them. And then I also replace uh, when they're really bad and nasty. You don't need to, but I also replace the actual caliper bracket bolts, which is a W500540 S442. Uh, the brake pads that you're going to need are these BRSD 1775s, or the Ford part number is GU2Z2V200E. And then the calipers that you're going to need is BRRF239. And then the Ford part number is CK4Z2Charlie026 Charlie. And basically, let's just get started taking it apart. At this point, what I like to do is I'll start with dismantling the caliper itself. I'll go ahead and break these loose and get the caliper off of here. And then when I'm done with that, I'll pry the pads and everything off. And then I'll work on getting the bracket off. And then I'll go to the actual axle flange. So let me get this off and I'll show you what it looks like when I get it off and then I'll get this off and show you what it looks like when I get it off. You may end up needing a pair of pliers to grab this block right here. Because you see it's turning the wrench as well. You have to isolate this block on the back of it while you turn the wrench. So that's what I'll be doing now. Okay, I got the bracket pulled off, the caliper pulled off and put up here. Now I need to get these pads out of here and i uh, usually use a flathead which i didn't show you i apologize that's another tool you need is just a flathead screwdriver just pry them out of there get them out of the way Make sure these are nice and free and lubed up. You can pull them out of here. You can pull the sleeve back right here and then look and see how clean the grease and stuff is and choose whether or not you need to do anything. When they move this easy like this and they're not fighting at all, typically they don't need to be taken out of here. They're probably clean enough. And you could come in with your screwdriver, pry off your little clips. Now, 
We gotta work on getting this bracket out of here. 15 mil, 15 mil. Now you can go ahead and pull the bracket out of there. Take that drill and brush and clean out all those areas where the clips and stuff go. Clean it out real good. Now I can go ahead and pull these studs out of here. Let me get my big gun. There's that O-ring that needs to be replaced right there. You don't want to reuse those. Now at this point, you can start hammering around this rotor face to knock it loose. And you can hit it with a little spray if you want, which I'll do that real quick. CRC freeze off. Let it sit for a couple minutes. There we go. There we go. Now you've got it knocked away. Now what you'll do is you'll work on spinning it. You actually have to use two hands and rotate these to the open gaps, and then you're gonna have to slowly tap it from the backside here and work it off. This one's actually not fighting as bad as some of the some of the other ones do. The problem is people don't know when the rotors get so low it really cuts into the face of these, and then they get so hot and you're trying to cut through them and you keep cutting through bits on the on the lathe in there and these aren't really easy to, to cut they're more when they get to this point you just replace them and you'll come through and clean off anything maybe give your give a brush over a wipe down on your tone ring right here on the back of your hub assembly You got a little wire brush you could go through and wire brush everything this one's actually fairly clean so i'm not too much worried about that just want to wipe everything off real good make sure i get any kind of shavings off of this tone ring i need to hit it real quick with some brake clean Hit your backing plate, clean it off, wipe it down when you're done. Wipe your speed sensor down, see how gummed up it is. Might want to get some like shop here and blow off anything that you can't wipe off. Okay, you got speed sensor cleaned off. Everything just kind of lightly wiped down without having to get into it too much. Speed sensor is all nice and clean. No more, no more build up on the sensor that's going to block it. It ain't perfect. I don't want to pull that sensor out because you risk breaking it. Now you're ready to go ahead and start installing your rotor and everything on it. And then putting your new O-ring on your axle. So you put the rotor on, then you turn it to line up with the holes. Then you take the axle, put it in there with the new O-ring, line it up with the holes, and then the bolts go through the whole assembly. All right, so the rotor's on. Another tool that I forgot to tell you about is this little flathead screwdriver.
You can actually just come right up under it, pull that O-ring off, put the new O-ring on, put a little oil on it, slide it back into your assembly, line it up before you put your bolts in. All right, here's the new one. Try this with one hand. It may work, may not work. I don't know. Ooh, call me the one-handed bandit, baby. Take some of that oil that's sitting there, still nice and clean. Grab the shaft. <laughs> Line it up. Slide it in. Now you're gonna have to feel, you're gonna have to move it up and down a little bit and feel for the grooves. There it went. I had to push down on the bottom, push down on the bottom, pull back on the top. And then you can take and line that up right there. Line your hole for your rotor up all the way through. Give it a nice little pop. The seal went in all the way. Make sure you got this hump side of the rotor facing out and you don't put it on the opposite way because if you put this on the back side, you end up running, running into problems with your caliper and your bracket. Now go ahead and put your bolts and everything in all the way around. Now most guys don't go by the book and they just tighten them up real good. Um, I go by the book when I do these. The axle flange right here. And then I put it up underneath the side of the truck. Right there. Sometimes I have to angle it a little bit. And then I torque them. All right, now that these are torqued all the way around, you can go ahead and give it another spritz of brake clean just to clean off any residual that may have come out of there. That was from when you were installing your axle. Now you're gonna need to find the, the right bit that goes in here. And you follow the direction of the arrow. The arrow says turn this way. So you need to turn this piston this way. You're gonna have to find the right fitting and the right adapter. I'm gonna use my pneumatic kit because it helps me hold it. In my kit, the one that I need is the number seven bit. And basically it installs like this. My bottom pin is lined up and my top pin is lined up and I hit to apply the pressure, now I turn this handle and it turns the piston in the way I need to go. Now, when I normally get it, I try to get it about, I try to get that slot about even with that right there, and then I'll clean out this area with a brush. Release the pressure, take it out, clean everything up, and then go prep your caliper bracket, put it back up there, torque it down, put the new bolts and stuff in it. You don't have to do what I'm doing, but I took a little bit of blue Loctite I put on the bolts. I also went ahead and preloaded my guides and stuff on my bracket, and now let's go install everything. Well, the so eighty-five foot-pounds is the bracket torque, and the hub flange bolts are thirty-five foot-pounds plus seventy degrees. The hub flange bolts are thirty-five foot-pounds plus seventy degrees. Okay, so in the back we have eighty-five foot-pounds. Come on. I didn't know. Oh, it reset to my last spec. Five foot pounds. So I'll do the first one and then I'll do all the rest off camera. I'll go around and do all the rest off camera. And then I'll do the rest of these at 70 degrees. First one on camera, the rest off. Gives you a breakdown of what the torque equals, about 114 foot-pounds. I'll do the rest off camera. 
Now everything's all stacked, you can go ahead and put a little caliper grease on your tabs here and here so the brake pads can slide better and then go ahead and install your pads. Now you have two different pads. You have a pad that has a pin on the bottom that goes on the back where the piston's at and you got a, two pins on the outside that are shorter. Those are locator pins for where these sit on the outside of them. Install your pads now. Should look like this. Nice and clean and installed. Now go ahead and slide your caliper bracket over and make sure that it's aligned with your pin back here, the bottom of the slot. Right, so these right here, uh, these are 44 foot pounds, what you're supposed to torque these to. I don't ever actually put a torque wrench on these. You just really have to snug the hell out of these and that's it. So it's tight right now. You just literally stop moving and what I do is I just nice and tight stop. I've had these break before. I don't like the 44 foot pound torque spec to be honest with you. Um, I just snug the hell out of them because they have blue Loctite on them already. And that's just how I do it. All right, when I'm done putting everything together, I try to look and make sure that channel is lined up with that groove right there. They should be lined up and then the other side should be lined up with the pin. And that's it, that's, that's, all, that's all she wrote. And then you should be able to move this in and out a little bit. We're good. Put your wheel and stuff back on, you're done. That's how you change the brakes on the rear on the trans T250. Step by step by step, everything you need. Okay, so what we have now is this is, this side is installed and everything's torqued down. I purposely did this. You see how this little alignment tab is not perfectly lined up with that groove? Watch this, like this. Rotate your piston back, just a little bit. And there you go. Now it's all lined up. You're good to go. Man, there's just so much of it. I tried to get it all off of here, and then I missed this spot. Let me pull this back off and clean it one more time. I missed like a bunch of stuff on this, this ridge right here. The customer's in a hurry for the vehicle, and I'm trying to rush. They don't necessarily need it back right this sec, but they need it back by tonight. Snowstorm's coming in, they want it back on their property. Let me pull this back off real quick and do a better job cleaning this side like I did the other side. I have missed this whole entire section right here, and it's not like me to do that. But I'm worried about upsetting this guy instead of trying to make sure the job's really nice and clean like I always do. But it's just this spot right here is what I missed. I didn't miss any of the other stuff. Maybe I could just do it right here, get it clean from right here. I feel bad when I don't do this stuff before I release it because I want it to be like clean when they get it back, you know, really clean. Let me spray this down real quick. Some brake clean. better now I'll come over here and dry it off real quick 